Each year, wheat farmers work tirelessly to get to this moment. Harvest, a culmination of the time, effort, and care required to produce each bushel of wheat, and a celebration of the immeasurable impact each farmer has on the world. Ensuring a reliable food source is our generation's greatest challenge, and farmers take on that challenge year after year. In order to meet the demands of our growing population, farmers need a consistent supply of new, improved wheat varieties, and we're proud to get those varieties into their hands as fast as possible. Welcome to the Kansas Wheat Innovation Center home of the Kansas Wheat Farmer. The Innovation Center is located in Manhattan, Kansas, and is part of Kansas State University's Grain Science and Industry Complex. It cost $15 million to build this 48,000 square foot facility, and since its grand opening in 2012, has hosted over 10,000 visitors from around the world. The Innovation Center is the state's single largest farmer investment in wheat research, and it was primarily funded by the Wheat Checkoff, which is a two-cent assessment on each bushel of wheat sold in Kansas. The organizations responsible for making this facility a reality include the Kansas Wheat Commission, the Kansas Wheat Commission Research Foundation, and the Kansas Association of Wheat Growers. Within the building, there are many public and private partnerships that help the Innovation Center fulfill its mission which is to use advanced techniques in wheat research to improve yield and quality of new wheat varieties while shortening the time needed to develop those varieties. To put it simply, the people within this facility are getting new, improved varieties into the hands of farmers faster because that is what's necessary to ensure an adequate food supply for current and future generations. Here's how they do it. Good wheat begins with good genetics. Scientists must find desirable traits like disease resistance or drought tolerance in wheat's relatives and cross them to create a new, higher quality variety. At Kansas State University's Wheat Genetics Resource Center, which is located in the Innovation Center, there are 10,000 lines of ancient wheat relatives. It is one of the most diverse and best curated collections in the world and it allows scientists to go treasure hunting and find desirable genetic traits for new varieties. Having access to bred wheat's ancient relatives is critically important for the breeding process because wheat is a hexaploid, meaning it has six sets of seven chromosomes, and that makes genetic research on wheat much more difficult than other crops. The bred wheat genome is about five times larger than the human genome, the human genome has 3 billion DNA letters, while wheat has 16 billion. Wheat's genetics are incredibly complex, and it wasn't until 2017 when scientists finished mapping its genome. Now, we know exactly where each trait is located, what they do, and how they interact with other traits. Developing a new wheat variety takes time, but Heartland Plant Innovations can significantly speed up this process. HPI is a plant science company that was created by the Kansas Wheat Commission and is housed in the Innovation Center. They provide a toolbox of advanced wheat breeding technologies and services to wheat breeders, not just at Kansas State University, but across the world. One of the key technologies they provide is doubled haploids. Doubled haploids are genetically pure plant lines that offer a quick route to new gene combinations for higher yield improved quality, disease resistance, or other crop improvements. It normally takes 12 years for a new variety to get into the hands of farmers, but doubled haploid is a wheat breeding shortcut because it can cut four to six years off the breeding process. The Innovation Center has 15,000 square feet of research laboratories, featuring 13 indoor climate-controlled growth rooms this is where the doubled haploid process begins. The lights are brighter and the temperature is warmer in this room compared to other rooms where the plant is at a different life stage. When wheat plants enter a different life stage or if scientists need to conduct specific experiments, the plants are moved to different growth rooms. Each room is temperature controlled and has LED growth lights that have adjustable light spectrums to affect the behavior of plants. Additionally, 
Since Winter Week covers the bulk of the research at the Innovation Center, rooms are needed that can cold treat or vernalize the wheat for a period of time to simulate winter indoors. Winter switches the plant from a vegetative state to a reproductive state and allows the plant to undergo fertilization and produce grain. Overall, these labs and growth rooms are essential to the doubled haploid breeding process because they allow scientists to grow multiple generations of winter wheat and conduct experiments year-round. After the winter wheat plants have matured in the growth rooms, they get moved into the greenhouses. The Innovation Center has eight greenhouse units that span nearly 23,000 square feet. The outside walls and roof are constructed of plastic, which has better insulating properties and is resistant to up to two inch diameter hail. All eight greenhouses are automated and scientists can monitor and control the greenhouses from anywhere internet access is available. They set a temperature range for each room. A weather station on the roof monitors conditions and a computer takes the necessary steps to keep each room at the desired temperature. Those steps may include opening or closing vents or activating heating or cooling systems. One of the greenhouse rooms does have air conditioning and provides ideal growing conditions for wheat, even in the hottest summer months. Doubled haploids are only one of many advanced wheat breeding techniques used in the Innovation Center. These techniques are just an intermediate step in the entire process of creating a new wheat variety. When the work is done at the Innovation Center, the wheat line is returned to the breeder, who will make the decision whether or not to release it for farmers to grow. If the variety is released, the seed is grown and distributed through a network of licensed farmer and seed dealers. All of the tools used work towards the goal of accelerating the improvement of wheat varieties, both in yield and quality. Quality is the key factor in the minds of domestic and international wheat buyers. After new wheat varieties have been planted, grown, and harvested by farmers, those grains are delivered to grain elevators or shipped directly to end users, such as flour mills. Graincraft actively collects wheat samples at harvest for milling and baking evaluation at the Innovation Center. Those samples are milled into flour and tested for dough strength and other end product quality attributes. Graincraft's close proximity to research scientists and wheat breeders allows them to provide valuable industry feedback as new wheat varieties are being developed. This relationship with breeding programs supports the ongoing importance of milling and baking quality as a primary component of new variety releases. Once wheat has been tested for quality, it's used to create a variety of products for people across the world to eat. These products can range from flours to breads to pastas and other packaged goods. Because of wheat's nutritional value and versatility, it's important to educate consumers about how to incorporate it into their diet. Outreach and education is one of the Kansas Wheat Commission's primary goals, and they are also located in the Kansas Wheat Innovation Center. Now you know just how complex the journey wheat goes through before it is ready to eat. And as Earth's population grows and the demand for food increases, the Kansas Wheat Innovation Center is uniquely positioned to be one of the leading wheat research facilities in the world that can improve the efficiency and productivity of Kansas wheat farmers while providing greater global food security. Thank you for touring.